What's up, everyone? This is a Destroyer229, and welcome to Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. The second game in the Ace Attorney series. This game was originally released internationally on the Nintendo DS in 2006 and is part of the Ace Attorney trilogy that was released for the Nintendo Switch, which is what we're playing today. <laughs> you guys really liked me playing the first Ace Attorney game, considering it did also win a poll, and I had a lot of fun playing the first game. And since I already had the trilogy, it really was just a matter of time before we got around to doing the other two games. And while we're not anywhere close to doing the third game, we're at least going to start Justice for All today. So we are just go there. <laughs> we are just going to jump right on in. So we're gonna start with episode one, the Lost Turnabout. Get into this mess. That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. Huh? B but I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title! What a nightmare! And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Huh? Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal. Mr. Attorney. Oh, oh my head. Oh, it's throbbing. Why does it feel so foggy in there? Good morning! Ah! Uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but c can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Roger that! Uh, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Uh, wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. What are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble! What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix, right? Life in my hands? You promised me! You said you would prove that I was not guilty! Not... guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off! Just leave it to me, you said! You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day! And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir! I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever! What is this girl babbling about? 
Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but uh, who are you? What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible! No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir? Oh, I cannot believe this! No, it's just... Well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... I... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Uh, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see. What can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. Oh, I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ugh! Someone please! Tell me this is just a bad dream! Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? Oh. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, uh, are you talking to me? See any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? Sure. I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a sec. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually... You see, Your Honor, my memory's kind of, um... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair, but swift. I believe I've told you this before. I hope you've not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I have. Mr. Payne. Your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me! And besides, Dustin and I... We weren't lovers like that. In any case... The prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay... And who are you again? The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go! Don't let me down, Mr. Wright! Nowhere to hide. Oh, I'm so dead. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides out of the precinct, sir. 
You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant... She works under me, so, you know... You work under that detective? Yes, sir, and while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters, Exposé Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. Dustin. I forgot just every name's a pun. He was pushed down for the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, yes. The autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirm the time of death. If I may, your honor. The prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. Okay, well, we have a photo. Now then, I recall at yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, your honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess? Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Uh, was there? Have you lost your mind? Oh, actually... Uh, it's just nerves. <laughs> just give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. All right, sir. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yep! Info about evidence and people involved with this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by pressing the R button. The R button, huh? You know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. Uh, sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can find. What was it again? The R button? All right, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. Okay, first of all, ooh, we got quite a few things here. Okay, cell phone. I found it in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. Well, I guess the people there. Uh, autopsy report, time of death, uh, September 6th at 6.28 p.m. Cause of death was a broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. From falling? Glasses found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses. And then the photo. So... There's gotta be something that's... You know. Then again, it's a little bit too early to really tell. Okay, profile. So, Maggie Bird... My client, the only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. Dustin Prince. That is a bit of an age gap. A uh, victim and a policeman. It seems he was dating the defendant, Maggie. And then Payne and Gumshoe. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? So, the glasses. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And he held onto them as he fell. Hey, what are you giving me this evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Mm. Yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses he found at the scene of the crime are not mine. I swear, sir! You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. <laughs> a coincidence, she says. <laughs> Your honor, 
I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Okay, Gumshoe's testimony. I do apologize if my voice kind of sounds a little bit iffy. Uh, I haven't been feeling the best. I'm a little bit better. It's been a while since I recorded. So, <laughs> great way to start a series is with a shot throat. But the show must go on. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. Oh boy, not another Maya printing. Yep. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. This is a picture of the writing, your honor. Why, this is... Yes, I can see your name is clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Okay, what the hell? If his neck broke on impact, how could he write it? How could he write that name? As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 but I already told you, those glasses aren't mine! And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy! I'm not guilty, sir! Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it! I'm counting on you! Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm gonna lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Uh, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter! Either way, it's bad for us, sir! That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies! It was a very interesting way to have a tutorial and not have Maya. <laughs> Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. I yes Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be all right. And thankfully, I have myself a drink to refresh my throat, because I'm going to need it. Okay. So... There's something even more incriminating than glasses under the body. Uh, about those glasses. Do you have any proof that those belong to my client? Lenses are for nearsightedness, and are almost the same strength as hers. Even if the frames look kind of like the one she's wearing in her- Even the frames look kind of like the one she's wearing in her ID, pal. Is it? Uh, not in the profile it doesn't. Hmm, what should I do now? Continue pressing. Hold it! Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Do you have any more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Uh, um, the dirt and sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. So what you're saying, detective, is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients. Um... Something like that. What? I see. So there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing! I could totally feel it down in my gut! Uh, okay. 
So nothing more than that, just that the glasses don't appear to be Maggie's. During the, his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. I almost feel like that's not quite, because I didn't see any benches in the higher portion, but let's just press everything and then find what we need to do. Now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, de detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. Um... Oh, whoops. D whatever. <laughs> the culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name... Was the name that of my client? Okay, he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground. Okay. As long as I don't uh, hit present, I should be good. Yeah, because I mean, I don't see any benches on the higher portion. The benches is on the lower. Uh, clear defendant's name. It's, was clearly the defendant's name. Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Hmm, he's got a point. Hey, hold on! Huh? Don't huh me! I know the picture says Maggie, but... Now that she mentions it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction! Now hurry up and present some evidence! So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. Better check the court record again. It's a piece of evidence in the glass. It's hard to say that she's the culprit. Okay, picture number one. Yeah, there's nothing to indicate that Maggie is in this scene. This picture. Especially since you don't even see where the hat is. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just press this one. We at least know where we need to present evidence, but just be on the safe side. And you are certain that it was the victim who wrote the name on the ground. And there were scratches on his fingers from the rough sand. And there were grains of sand stuck under his pointer fingernail. Hmm, it certainly seems that the name was written by the victim himself. That didn't go well. If the writer really was the victim himself, then we're in a lot of trouble. Don't give up! spirit going. I'm glad you're all pumped up, but... I really want to see your special move, sir! My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present... evidence? Oh, that present evidence. Actually, I was just thinking about that. Yes! The Great Phoenix Ride is back! Oh, that's right! Huh? I heard that lately you can present not only evidence, but people's profiles as well. Oh, we, the, there was no need for the profiles in the first game. It sure makes things a bit more complicated, so be careful, sir. People's profiles, huh? All right, let's give this another try. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not Maggie's name! Clearly is the defendant's name Maggie. That's how you would normally spell Maggie. But that's not how our Maggie spells her name. Interesting! That is going to make things a lot more complicated. But there we go. What is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, fingers outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. 
What a rush! Detective Gumshoe! Y you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. God, that's still so weird. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's name is Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled M-A-G-G-E-Y. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, 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 but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to have not known her name. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne. Y yes your honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were, in fact, lovers. Y yes I I'm quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the office force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. Okay, this is actually going on a bit longer than I was anticipating, but we'll at least get through this before potentially calling it a day. Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. After six months? Well, then again, some people get married in less than time, but it is still pretty fast. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, I mean, Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had bought over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. Let me cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. Okay, so what was this present then? Was it the glasses? <laughs> Officer Prince and Officer Bird had been going out for about half a year. How do you know about this? Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Bird was a rookie at the time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. They got close, I take it. Actually, I was supposed to go too, but uh, I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip. I'm sorry I didn't. If only I had gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, nothing, sir. Really. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> It's not like they were even talking about marriage. Again, after six months? Marriage? But wasn't the victim eight years older than her? What? You're saying a guy's gotta marry someone the same age as himself, pal? No, that's not what I meant at all. Detective Gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know. Uh, I think this fella has a ways to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal! Yeesh, come shoot, you're her superior! <laughs> Just happened to be the victim's birthday. The day of the incident. You mean September 6th? Yeah. The victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. 
Oh, I remember when I was young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly time. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. Uh, had gotten, uh, Prince a present. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because I'm her boss, and I've, I've got to watch out for my subordinates. But even what she was going to give as a present? Isn't that going a bit too far? Hey, pal, watch what you say! I know everything that happens under me. If someone so much as scratches there, I really don't need to know that much. Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. I agree. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant, that should not be the point of discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a second, why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. I think the good detective is about done here. Something she had bought over two months ago. Over two months ago? Yep. She's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Uh, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. A baseball glove? Huh. Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then... what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? The glove was custom made? Yep, that's what I said. Hmm, so the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to the case. Yes, it would seem that there is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to this case? I would... I mean, I would think that it's relevant. Potentially establishing a motive? Or even where exactly this glove was? I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant! That glove is the key to this whole case! Yes! Bluffing to the max! Now this is Mr. Wright I know! I'm so happy you're back, sir! I was wondering how long it'd take! This is great! Hmm... Pressing people... It feels like I've done this before... As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people... Very well. If you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I bought the glove. I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to the court. Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it, sir. It's, uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Baseball glove. Huh. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had to special order it? Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim. I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, I am wondering if I should continue on. Um... Well, we at least need to get through the testimony, so we'll get through that. We'll see. Hopefully this won't take too much longer, considering this is still the tutorial case. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. 
Next, we check the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Huh. Hmm. Yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. His right hand, huh? And curiosity's sake... It was custom made. Um... Judging by the glove... Is he left-handed? That glove looks like it's for the right hand. Which would typically would be for a left-handed player. She did say there was one other reason, so I think that's the reason why. But let's press everything first. But can you really determine handwriting based on a sample written in sand? Eh, this is why amateurs are amateurs. We're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. Hmm, I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Your Honor. So what was the result of the investigation? Alright, uh, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. So in the end, you couldn't confirm it. Hey, don't you look down on us! I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal! Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I've never heard that before. Me neither. Nor I. I've never heard anything like that in the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up. Anyway. The victim's pointer finger. His pointer finger? You know, the one you're always pointing and waving around in people's faces. <laughs> Don't tell me it bothers you. Every time you do it, I have a mini heart attack. It's like you're trying to kill me, pal. In any case, you examined the victim's index finger, correct? Yeah, you figured there should be something on his finger if it had been written in sand. Hmm, and the results? Uh, there was sand trapped under the fingernail. And what does that prove? Well, it proves that he did write that name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. Also, scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. Scratches on his skin? Yep, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible. Sure is! That's the power of scientific investigation! God, why is he reminding me of... Oh god, what was her name? From the fifth case? I'm blanking. They're so small that we had to use a magnifying glass. Like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it! We used one of those and that's how we found them. I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. Phoenix, you have amnesia right now. I don't think you're one to talk. This is the big one. His right hand. Are you absolutely sure? I believe in the power of science. Hmm. I wonder if my evidence is solid enough to counter with. Listening to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. But the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange, sir? If Justin really wrote that message with his right hand, do you think I would have gone through that much trouble to get him his present? A present? What about it? Yeah. Okay. It was what I thought at the start, and yeah, it's definitely it. It's a left-handed glove. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Uh, never really thought about it, but, uh... 
it's really yellow. And that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Well, you're absolutely right! This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale. Have you? Well, uh, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write his name with, the, the name with, again? Well, that's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that it was his, wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! Oh! Overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Order! Order! When you think about it that way, then yes! It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. Then that means that Maggie is... No! It's not possible! Mr. Payne. Y yes your Honor? The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! Alright, you did it, Mr. Wright! Oh, I feel like I can breathe again! It seems that we have reached a, the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? <laughs> well, uh, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again! You're really good! And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. You're joking, I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. No! Not yet! I mean, please, give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? And what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Order! Order in the court! I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from the, this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down, so I'm going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. And with that, we're going to call it a day. So, next time on Let's Play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Or, uh, Justice for All. I forgot what the subtitle was for a second. We're going to get to part two of this. This is a lot longer than I would have figured for, <laughs> for an introductory... Uh, trial, but <laughs> it's not a Phoenix Wright trial if you can't prove someone else guilty. So we'll be back for the remainder of this case next time. So until then, everyone, take care. I love how I just saved and then it immediately brought me to a save point anyway. <laughs> Go me!